Hi, it's Matt from Go Green Autos. So I've done videos on electric vans before, but this video is just to explain and show you the Kangoo electric van. So the Kangoo ZE came to the UK in 2011 and it was in this shape, the Phase 1 Kangoo. So you can recognise these by this shape headlight and this flat front. Uh, they look identical to the diesel vans, the only difference is you have this charge flap at the front and the charging is a Type 1 socket, AC of course, and it's a 3.5 kilowatt 16 amp charger. So a Phase 1 van looks like this inside. Um, most of them don't actually have stereos because the stereo wasn't a standard fit on the Kangoo Electric, so many of the earlier vans don't have uh, radios. They're easy to fit though, they did fit all the wiring looms, so the antennas on the roof, all the wiring and power is behind a blanking plate here. All you have to do is obviously fit the stereo and you need to fit the speakers in the doors. Uh, the wiring goes down to the doors, it's just missing the actual speaker behind the grill and the little mounting ring. So you need to buy that mounting ring from Renault, um, put some speakers in, put the stereo in and it will all work. Um, many of them don't have air conditioning either because um, air conditioning isn't standard either on the Kangoo Electric and the uh, majority of the vans don't have um, air conditioning and that's even true of the much newer ones. Uh, but you get electric windows and um, electric mirrors as well as standard. But other than that it's standard uh, diesel van. Um, look inside there's absolutely no difference between these and the diesel vans apart from the drivetrain of course and because they use the same uh, body shell as the diesel vans all the electric vans have this filling cap on the side but of course it's just blanked off because there's no fuel tank and then in 2013 the phase two van was launched nothing much has changed with the drivetrain it's just styling changes so you now get a uh, different front bumper slightly different headlights and now the charge port is behind the front badge like it is on a zoe and the charge port has changed to a type 2 however nothing else has changed it's still the same three and a half kilowatt 16 amp charging and inside on the phase two not much change either it's just the layout of this central part of the dash where the heating controls are um, you do tend to find stereos now became standard fit but you still don't get air conditioning so the majority of kangoo vans uh, still don't have air conditioning but everything else remains the same the Kangoo electric van is available in two sizes. You've got the medium wheelbase van and you've got the long wheelbase van. And the only difference is with the long wheelbase van, you've got an extended wheelbase so you get this much extra to give you more cargo space. But with the electric vans, there is many more medium wheelbase vans around than long wheelbase vans. So let's talk about battery packs. Right from when the van was launched in 2011, right up until 2018, the Kangoos had the same battery pack. It was a 22 kilowatt hour pack, and that gave the vehicle a range of uh, typically 80 to 90 miles. The official NEDC uh, figure was 110 miles, but in the real world, you're looking at 80 to 90 miles if you're driving economically. And that battery, was always leased just like it is with the Renault Zoe because there was this uh, worry about battery life and the batteries were very expensive to actually sell the electric vehicles they bought in the leasing arrangement so you bought the vehicle but then you hired the battery pack and that remained right up until um, late 2015 where you then have the option to buy the battery when it was new so vans where they have an owned battery they're actually called i models and uh, this one is an i model and the way you can tell it's an i model is it will have a little i here on the back and also on the logbook in the model name and i means it has an owned battery from when it was new whereas if this is missing it is therefore a battery rental version However, that's now changed as of summer 2020. Uh, existing owners of Renault vehicles with leased battery packs can now actually purchase their battery pack and uh, get rid of the lease. So you're going to now start seeing um, older 
uh, Kangoos and Zoes that aren't high models that maybe now have an owned battery because the customer, the owner, has um, spent the extra and bought their battery pack from Renault Finance, RCI Bank and uh, has then therefore stopped that lease agreement. I have recently made a video explaining battery leases um, and that's on the YouTube channel so if you have a look there but I'll also put the um, link to it in the description below. So as I said right up until 2018 all the Kangoos are pretty much the same spec in terms of drivetrain. The only thing that changed was the type of charging connector but actually the specs of the charger behind that connector uh, didn't change. So these Kangoo vans have got a 44 kilowatt electric motor. Um, you have a 12 volt battery, all electric vehicles have a 12 volt battery because that's running your all the electronics and uh, all the electrical components, the lights, wipers, dash and everything like that. It's all standard car stuff so it's 12 volt. The traction battery which sits down there under the floor that's typically around 400 volt and all that is doing is powering the electric motor and the heater. So these Kangoo vans have a resistive heater so what that means is effectively you've got a 400 volt uh, heating element which heats water and pumps it around the heater matrix and because of that uh, it uses huge amounts of energy to produce heat in the cabin and that's the same with all electric cars and therefore electric vehicles do uh, less range in the winter because they're using more power and that's just because you have to generate that heat somehow because a normal combustion engine effectively has a fire under the bonnet and heats the byproduct so there's no problem with heating on a, a normal combustion engine in fact you have whole systems to disperse that heat with your radiator and everything um, but with an EV there's no heat generated so you have to make the heat and that uses a lot of energy. So as I said they have a resistive heater and electric vehicles therefore are less efficient in the winter for two reasons. Partly it's often cold uh, particularly overnight so the batteries underneath get cold and batteries are less efficient when they're cold and you've got to heat the vehicle and therefore that's going to draw a lot of power from your traction battery to produce that heat for the cabin heater. The Kangoos do have preconditioning though which helps in the winter so up here on the dash we can use the buttons on the stalk and here it says comfort program 8am so this is the time that you set that uh, you want to uh, leave in the morning so you set that up and while the vehicle is plugged into your charger it will wake up in the morning and switch on the heating and it warms the cabin and if it's really cold it's obviously going to melt the ice off the windows and it preconditions the vehicle so it gets ready for 8am or whatever time you set and it does that while it's connected to the charger and therefore it's not um, using power from the battery pack so when you disconnect and do your um, first journey of the day you've still got 100% range because you've got 100% charge and that does make a huge difference in the winter just to give you that maximum range and therefore when you set off to drive you probably don't need the heating on inside because the cabin's already warm depends how long your drive is of course so all kangoo vans right from 2011 have this um, preheating function however there's no app on your phone it's all just done from a uh, timer on the dash but it's very effective and it works well. So the charging on the Kangoo, whether it's the phase one where the charge port is here or phase two where the charge port's behind the badge, they're all the same. They're a three and a half kilowatt, 16 amp AC charging. Um, so charging is typically overnight when you're not using the van or top ups throughout the day when you return. They do not have a DC rapid charging. So the Kangoo is no good for the long distance driving because every charge is going to be at the same rate. It's going to be at three and a half kilowatts, so it's four hours or more, regardless of the charger you plug into. So the Kangoo Electric Ram with the 22 kilowatt hour battery is ideal for people who are in uh, inner cities or are just doing local delivery work or working local and aren't driving any more than say 80 miles a day. Um, but of course you can uh, 
uh, top up throughout the day if you've got access to a charger but if you're at work on site during the day of course you can just charge these on a three pin plug it does charge a little bit slower but often um, if you can charge at work during the day then you're going to bring it back up to 100% while you're at work so you can effectively double the daily range. Next we come on to the newer van, the 33 kilowatt hour van and they have badging on here saying ZE 33, 33 kilowatts and ZE uh, by the way means zero emission. So this is the current Kangoo, it hasn't changed yet and uh, these uh, came in in late 2017 sometime and therefore that uh, larger battery pack gives you a bigger range so the official figure the NEDC figure is 170 miles but in the real world you're going to get around 125 mile range the styling hasn't changed on these it looks exactly the same the standard phase 2 look and there's a few other important changes with the ZE33 van as well which makes a huge difference firstly your charger still AC charging no DC rapid charging at all on Kangoos but now your AC charger is a 7 kilowatt 32 amp charger so it's in increased the charging speeds but of course the battery pack has increased as well but it's still not two hours off the charging time the other change is the motors have changed so the previous motor was made by Continental just like it was in the Zoe but then later Renault made their own and it also changed in the Zoe as well so this has got the newer Renault uh, electric motor inverter and charging systems and what that also introduced is a new heating system so these have a heat pump and a heat pump is a lot more efficient so a EV with a resistive heater you might see about a 25% uh, drop in range in the winter when you've got the heating on one with a heat pump it's more efficient and you're looking at something like a 15% drop in range inside the ZE33 nothing's changed still the same dash uh, they have changed the radio slightly but it's all pretty insignificant the only thing that did change is the fabric on the seats but everything else is exactly the same inside there's also another Kangoo Electric I've got here which has actually got a hydrogen fuel cell so these are very rare in the UK there's only a handful exist in the UK and they were converted by a third party company Renault are now doing this themselves again with the help of a, a third party company so there are a lot more of these on the continent and these have a hydrogen fuel tank here in the back these are all the long wheelbase versions to give you maximum cargo space still but you've got this hydrogen fuel tank here and your blanked off filler cap at the back that's previously not used on all the other electric Kangoos now has your hydrogen filling port behind it and then what you have here is a hydrogen fuel cell squeezed down into this void here and that's obviously taking your hydrogen making electricity and it's not driving the wheels it's just a range extender so it's a normal Kangoo electric in this case this is a 22 kilowatt hour version so you're looking about 80 to 90 miles on the battery pack but then if you start using hydrogen you can extend that range by another 100 miles or more as I said those are rare and few and far between so let's just explain the driving of an electric Kangoo so firstly they're automatics all electric vehicles are so you've got an automatic gear selector here but there's no gears because there's no gearbox but they give you um, an automatic gear selector because it's then standard components and it uh, all seems familiar and you drive it like an auto so to start it up keys in the ignition you put your foot on the foot brake and you turn the ignition on and then you wait a second or two and then you turn it round as if you were starting a starter motor and you get that beep and then a green go light and that's it it is now running but of course being electric there's no vibration there's no noise and it is utterly silent and then at this point we put it down to drive and we have a d there on the dash to show us we're in drive release the handbrake and then at this point you drive it like an automatic so while the van is all uh, the same as a diesel version they're just utterly quiet and smooth and um, just so much more refined than a normal Kangoo would be because there just isn't the vibration and all the noise coming through the cabin the Kangoos have a top speed of 89 miles an hour they have a relatively low powered motor 
but electric motors are really torquey. You get 100% of the torque straight from zero, um, and while the motor power might seem low, in reality these are hugely faster than any diesel van. Um, in fact, if the road is wet, you can very easily uh, spin the front wheels, and I've had many of these with really low mileage and bald front tyres where people have just driven them too fast. So with these you have an eco switch, which is down here, and that dulls the power of the motor, and it means that you're forced to accelerate a little bit more gently. Um, and actually it puts it at about the same speed as a diesel, to be honest. Um, I generally find I drive these in eco anyway, all the time. Um, it does cap your top speed to about 56 miles an hour, so unless you're on a dual carriageway, then driving around in eco is perfectly fine, and of course that's going to extend your range. So all electric vehicles have what's called regenerative braking. It's got nothing to do with the braking system. That's just um, slowing down on the electric motor, effectively engine braking, but of course your engine here is an electric motor. I have another video on my YouTube channel which I explain what regen braking is about, um, at like a beginner's guide to regen braking. So maybe you'll want to watch that, but basically what regen braking is, is um, allowing the electric motor to slow you down and then it's putting charge back in the battery because that electric motor is, is then running as a, a dynamo. And you utilise that um, while you're driving. You try to drive without touching the brakes. And the regen on the Kangas is set particularly strong. So when you lift off the accelerator, the van will slow down very quick by itself without touching the brakes. And it really is strong. Um, and it's a feature that is very nice and you soon get used to it. I think they've set it up quite strong because they're assuming there's going to be a load in the back. Um, but if driven properly, uh, you hardly ever touch the brakes. And uh, if, a, if the van's driven efficiently, genuinely, the front brake pad should last the life of the vehicle. You just don't need to change the brakes because there's no wear and tear on the brakes. You're doing all your slowing down on the electric motor, which is putting charge back in the battery, which is extending your range. And when you get used to driving like that, these are really nice. And going back to a diesel where you've got to change gears and you've got a clutch and they're easy to stall, it all just seems a lot of faff um, and electric vehicles are just lovely to drive. And as I said, electric vehicles are quiet uh, and smooth and very smooth linear acceleration because there's no gears. Um, and the whole van just feels so luxurious and refined compared to a diesel Kangoo. So I think I've pretty much covered everything in terms of the Kangoo ZD electric van. There's more information on the website and I've also got other videos on the channel that you might want to check out. If you found this video useful then please click the thumbs up icon because that allows other people on YouTube to find the videos and to maybe you might want to subscribe to the channel and you can click the little bell icon and you'll be notified when I upload another video.